Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Today's lesson is on how to make an air classifying impact mill. Now this is our action mining impact mill which I had in a previous video and it has two exits. You have a lower exit here if you were wet grinding you'd have to use that one and you typically put some kind of a screen there to try and keep the larger particles in the mill till they got smashed up. However, because it's at the low spot, it tends to let things out real quick and you get a wide particle size range and fairly coarse too. On the other hand, this is an air classification system. This type of mill the inlet is right here. You pour the raw material in here, and it's right here. These impactors spinning around actually create a draft. It blows air. It's, it's a very inefficient blower, but it actually creates a flow of air through the mill, and you can use that to your advantage because as it's spinning around, if you get the bottom one plugged off and have it set up like this, as the air is coming up this vertical pipe here, larger particles cannot make it. The airflow is inadequate to suspend them and therefore they fall back into the mill for regrind. Anything light enough to get to be suspended in this airflow gets out of the mill and you stop regrinding it. So this gives you a much better particle size range. As soon as it's ground fine enough, it's gone. If it's not ground fine enough, it keeps getting ground until it is. This comes up here and into this bag. Now I went to Harbor Freight and bought a dust collector system, a little one horsepower motor. The blower I can use for moving air in the mine to keep working areas uh, healthy, keep fresh air flushing, keep the dust out, things like that. But it came with a dust collector bag, which works quite well. <laughs> it would probably be better actually to have this come up to a 45 and another 45 and a few other little things, but this is the simplest way to do it at Home Depot. This plug is here simply for clean out. When I'm done uh, grinding, I take this plug out and blow all this material that's laying in here down into the bag. Another thing you get is a lot of dead bedding. Now you can see these impactors are a little bit worn. They're kind of away from the uh, housing a bit. And so you will actually get a layer of fine material in here. And this is what they call dead bedding. It just sits there and doesn't move. It's undesirable, but not terribly catastrophic. Um, this is not really a production unit. It's more for test size. And as such, we just clean it out after each thing. Now, let me put it together and I'll show you how this works. <clears throat> now this is important with this particular mill. This bolt is directly above the inlet. Therefore, if you drop a washer or a nut, it will actually go inside the mill. Therefore, always install this bolt first. So if you drop something, you can get to it. When it's the fifth one, and you do that, and then you gotta take everything else off, it gets really annoying. Now this is another device I made up. This was factory, this yellow part here. All the other darker, rustier parts I put on. This is a bucket holder that allows you to set a bucket here and the vibration of the machine kind of feed the material. Comes in handy. So, let's fire this baby up. So we 
just want to keep it going nice and steady. And continue from there. As you can see, that vibration is just about enough to keep a nice steady flow. That material there came out of the RC46. Now you can see the dead bedding in here and how this particular material just is going to tend to stay there. Just by hand, I can tell it's substantially finer than the feed material. Come on. Yes, this is definitely finer even than that. Another thing about this dead bedding in here is if you do have chunky gold, it's going to tend to be in this. It, it won't make it up and it'll work itself into here if it doesn't get torn up by the impact mill. So this material here, especially in a production setting, could become very rich. So now let's go ahead and see what the particle size distribution is. Here's a cup of the original material crushed through the keen. I've got a 30, a 60, and a 90 mesh screen here. And those are our particle sizes. 30 mesh plus, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, 90 mesh minus. You can see it's a fairly even particle size distribution with you know, 40% or so in the uh, 60 mesh plus, which uh, I would expect somewhere around here is where you start getting really good recoveries. These could be, but are more iffy. This should get you pretty good gravity recoveries on almost anything. So now let's do the other one. This is the air classified impact product. And one thing you might notice about it is it's almost fluid. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, 
Okay, that looks pretty well screened. And you can see we now have a much finer particle size distribution here. There's a very little bit in the larger particle sizes. It's almost all in the 100 mesh minus. That's how the air classification works. If you reduce the amount of air velocity, you can reduce that even more. But this is a pretty good grind. I'd be happy with that in most cases. So that's how an air classifying impact mill works. With no screens involved, you don't have wear, you don't have plugging, nothing like that. This particular mill generates a draft, so it's very easy. There's no more moving parts or anything. Just by adding a little plumbing and a dust collector bag, you can do fine. For a production setting, you might take a 55 gallon drum, put it here, and then run your dust collector bag here. You could even, in a, in a real production setting, add water into the 55 gallon drum, turn it into a slurry, and head it to your processing. If you have enough of a draft, you could make this tube here quite long. So you could elevate your crush door high enough so that it'll gravity flow the rest of the way through the entire system. This means that you're in real good shape in terms of you don't have a lot of pumps, conveyors, anything like that. This pipe is not a moving part. It doesn't really break down. So that's how the system works. If you don't have a, uh, an impact mill that actually creates a blowing action, what you can do is actually take a vacuum or a blower system like that dust collector system I was talking about. You can literally hook it up and suck it through the blower like that. The, it would be desirable to actually like put this bag inside a drum and then suck the air out of the drum so that you're not sucking much through the actual blower itself. But what the heck? There's lots of different ways of doing these things. So, air classification, simple, cheap, maintenance-free. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.